Kpaso Aquarius, Aquarius Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. It's mid-July, and I'm just now doing the July readings. Started with Gemini. Dosmos. Macaroni and cheese is evil. I don't want to ever eat it again. I got boxes of the Annie's Organic Mac and Cheese at Amazon Fresh. Yesterday, I got up. I had black coffee, chocolate chip cookies that I made for the full moon in Capricorn. Tuesday night. Technically, it is Thursday morning right now. Um, and that's all I had. And then a few hours ago, I made the macaroni and cheese and I had a bowl of that and I felt, oh, ever since. I have to be puritanical. I have to be a fucking, I don't know. I don't want to use the word Nazi. I have to be very strict with my diet or I suffer. I have to basically live on smoothies. Smoothies, green tea, lemon water, fresh fruit, or I suffer. It's weird. Sun and Venus and Aquarius, Virgo rising, Virgo moon. Okay. Oh shit. It's four of wands, but fuck. Yeah, four of wands, quattro de bastos. To a chalices, those the copas. <laughs> Man, this is killing me. The will. Seven of swords, they the espadas. I keep explaining in all these videos, this is very awkward. This bed slopes down, but this is the best place in the house to do card readings. King of swords. Ray, they, spot us. Um, Queen of Wands, Raina de Bastos. We have two signifiers side by side, and we start with four of wands and two of fucking cups. I sound like I'm pissed off. I kind of am. I need to stretch my legs. Um, yeah, I'm wearing a wig. It's obvious. Haven't been to Fantastic Sam's in over a month, so. I keep seeing all these lovey-dovey romantic cards. Did I say I started with Gemini? I started with Gemini. Um, and I was saying for Sagittarius, you know, not to be cynical, but I'm kind of cynical. I'm 49 years old. I've lived a lot of life. I'm cynical, but not bitter. Um, now, this is just a card reading. I don't know. These are just card readings, but I saw something somewhere, the news or some damn video that showed one of my feeds. I don't know. Uh that a lot of people are getting engaged, getting married. And I was thinking, these are really dark fucking times and people are getting married and they're making babies. But I think there were a lot of marriages after 9-11, after 9-11. Um, and that, that makes sense psychologically. Things are really fucked up, things are dark, so Get married, make babies, create your little Shangri-La, um, create your Four of Wands, your Ten of Cups. <sighs> yeah, I'm seeing Owen Wilson. And the Royal Tenenbaums, someone left a comment at one of my, I guess my latest pick a card, or one of my pick a cards at Siren Tarot. And they brought up Wes Anderson. I said, oh, cool, the Royal Tenenbaums is a favorite movie of mine. Anyway, there's that scene where, you know, when 
Owen Wilson is this um, famous writer in the Rule of Ten Bombs, and he's a drug addict, and he's doing this interview, and he just spaces out. And I'm kind of spacing out. I'm staring at the things on my wall. I've got all these things thumbtacked to my wall by the computer. And I'm not thinking of, I'm not thinking of anything in particular. Uh, my stack of Siren Tarot business cards. I'm in a, I'm in a peculiar, um, I want to delete this and start over, but I'm not going to. I'm in a peculiar time in my life. It scares me, to be honest. Uh, the tarot readings are just, they're really fucking polished and professional. Someone left a long novel of a comment on my latest Big Cart Siren Tarot saying that a professional tarot reader doesn't talk about themselves so much. So I thought of going to Redbubble and making a design that says professional tarot reader. That just, that sounds ridiculous to me, but I get nervous or not really nervous, but I'm just kind of perplexed by the readings that are just so formulaic and they just, they have it down to a damn science and they don't really make any mistakes and they always look a certain way. That's just not who I am. So I'm very flawed and awkward and weird. Venus and Sun and Aquarius, but not conjunct. Uh, this is a strange time in my life. When has my life ever not been strange? But I mean, I had mentioned at Siren Tarot that I'm going to have to come up with a new introduction because I'm not going to be in San Antonio anymore. And when I said that, I absolutely meant it. You know, I thought we're moving. We're moving to another town many miles from here. Well, not necessarily. So it's it's all up in the air. Nothing is planned. Uh, nothing is carved in stone. My life is very much in flux right now. I'm grateful. I've been at the same address for five years, and that's unheard of for me to be in one place for five years. So it's been very nice to have this comfort to just be in this little cozy nook like Emily Dickinson, you know, not having to go out there and fight and scramble like a rat. Uh, when I was at UTSA, when I was going to UTSA in my middle age, I had this shitty studio apartment in the medical center and I liked it. It was a shitty apartment, but I was grateful for it. There were problems. There was a raccoon in the wall. The neighbors were really trashy and loud and the landlord was awful. There was one month where there was no hot water. Um, but there was an accent wall and it was mine. As shitty as it was, it was my apartment and I had my quinoa and I had my kale and my bananas, whatever. But, um, My life has been very comfortable just hiding in this room, not having to go out there and fight San Antonio traffic. And it took a lot for me to get that piece of paper graduating from college on middle age. My blood's all over that piece of paper. But um, just being here and being in this mostly pleasant, harmonious, platonic partnership with my ex, raising our son together, um, and just working on my channel, doing client readings. I've bought luxuries that I never thought I could get. I mean, in January 2013, I was living in this little makeshift bedroom in this apartment off Haight Street in San Francisco. I was there for one month and then I moved in with my Capricorn ex. He lived in uh, a motel room in Eagle Pass. He was working contract at the casino. When I moved in with him, I had a suitcase full of clothes, a lot of hand-me-downs from a former friend, a Virgo, who comes from a wealthy family. So a lot of hand-me-downs, her designer one-offs, her designer hand-me-downs, whatever. 
a pair of cheap cowboy boots that I'd received for Christmas from my stepdad a couple of Christmases before. And I didn't have any running shoes. I didn't have any normal clothes. It was like all dresses and cowboy boots. Um, I didn't have my son. He was with his grandparents on their ranch in 2013. I had a car, but it was in San Antonio, so I was just a pauper. I was just a peasant. And it probably seems pretty small to most women my age. I mean, my God, I turned 50 in February. It probably seems ridiculous. A lot of women my age, I'm sure they own homes and they own vehicles. I sold my car two years ago, but I have all these um, bottles of perfume. I have all these crystals. I have... A Basquiat, of course, it's not an original. I got it at eBay, and they said at eBay that it was an original, and I bought it thinking it's probably not, but it's symbolic because someday I do want to own an original Basquiat. I've got a Dolly print, Salvador Dolly, uh, books, a fuck ton of books, a fuck ton of tarot decks, more clothes than I can wear in this lifetime, shoes, boots, um, lotion i've been able to buy more food than i need these past few years i've gained a lot of weight since the pandemic but my son just sneezed to me it's it's a lot and i've spent this almost entire video talking about myself because i'm a rebel venus and sun and aquarius i get all kinds of hate you talk about yourself too much you're really boring me. That's all I got for that. The so-called constructive criticism, it, it's wasted on me because I'm not trying to be, and I'm not going to name drop, I'm not trying to be the tarot reader, the professional tarot reader who has a million subscribers. I mean, fuck that. So, um, it looks like you're in a really good place. I mean, you have doubts, you have uncertainty, you could have baggage from a previous relationship, but welcome to the human experience. That's planet Earth. Um, I see mutuality. I see good sex. And it's exciting. It's never stagnant. There's probably a lot of fire and air in your sinistry. You probably both have a lot of masculinity, a lot of masculine energy in your natal charts. So that keeps things fresh, exciting. You make each other laugh and you make each other come. So that's really good to have good sex and when you have the mental rapport you know, like Gemini, usually Aquarius, if you have any Aquarius, Gem any Aquarius or Gemini energy, you're going to tend to be a sapiosexual. You can't do dumb. You can't be with someone who just, they, they can't really converse with you. They don't have any intellectual curiosity. Doesn't matter how hot they are. They can spend 10 hours in the gym and live on kale and smoothies they can be a fucking instagram model you don't care if you have a lot of aquarius and or gemini i would say you want someone that you can have fun with someone that you can talk to and friendship is the foundation <clears throat> and sex is good because um you fucking get each other. Sex starts in the mind. A lot of people don't seem to get that. Um, but yeah, you want to respect your partner's mind. And it looks like you have all that. So if you have it, if you're really close to someone and you're planning a marriage, you're planning a wedding, well, just order a fabulous fucking cake, or if you don't like cake, whatever you like, just go all out. 
and count yourself lucky and feel it. Be grateful because a lot of people are going hungry right now, literally and figuratively, figuratively, metaphorically. A lot of people are starving. There's that quote from Annie Mame. Life's a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. According to these cards, you're not starving to death. That's what I have for Aquarius. I hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.